Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Tool to Play presents Still Got Game with Derek D. Smooth Nolan and Joel Duda Rock Albert. If you'd like sponsor Still Got Game, email us at podcast at tool to play dot com. Hey now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Still Got Game, episode 297. Still Got Game's official podcast of tool to play dot com. I am, as always, Derek D. Smooth Nolan. And I am Joel Dude I Rock Albert. Joel Dude I Rock Albert it is Monday night, and we are here where we're supposed to be. For once. For Three for weeks twice. in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Out of control right now. Price. Yes. It, it's, uh, it's insane. We are like, we said we we're going to get back on schedule and we really did it. We are here and we are putting on a show for all of you. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. We're on it. Well, based on the comments from last week, it, it, you know, people love that episode. But I got, why, why don't we just jump right into that then? Let's do it. All right. Remember, if you want to leave us a voicemail, it will cut you off after a minute. TARDIS doctor comments. I'm still trying to catch my breath. I was laughing so hard in the car when D smooth was losing it with the cat masturbation stuff. Holy shit. Awesome. Yeah. I, I went a little tangential, just a little off, but, uh, yeah, the crowd seemed to love it. And, uh, it was, it was good. It was good to talk about. It, it was good to get that out in the air and up, you know, just put it out on front street that some of our listeners may be cat masturbators professionally, not, this is not yeah, they do it for money. shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For so money. You pay bills. Yeah. The, the, these things don't come cheap. You know, no. you can't just get your Xbox one, and your internets for nothing. So sometimes you got to jerk off a cat. Whatevs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or a dog. Doesn't yeah. Matter. That's another job altogether. Exactly. Different skill set. You can't do both at the same time. That'd be out of control. No, nah, you just, you gotta, it's a niche market <laughs> in both cases. They split <laughs> off and they, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we've, we've done it again. All right. Next comment, Nick 2979 comments. Despite my comment of relevance, somehow turning into me being the one that has to manually masturbate cats. I love the episode. Thanks for using my comment. Well, Nick 2979, we, we loved using your comment. It really, it's, it started a, a, a snowball, if you will, rolling. We loved using your comment just as much as you love masturbating cats. Yes, yeah. You are pro at it. Yeah, from, pro. from what we've heard, you are definitely not a novice. No. Um, experienced, really experienced. And we obviously <laughs> didn't didn't completely alienate you <laughs> and you're you're back. Yeah, for some reason you're back, which is amazing. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so thank you again for the comment, Nick2979. And last but not least, Tina comments. Nice work, gents. This was one of the funniest episodes in a long time. I, I would agree. Comments. Yeah. I, I think any episode where the two of us are laughing or where hit is completely roll. Like we see hit while we're recording and sometimes he is just uncontrollably rolling back in his chair. It looks like he's going to tip over. He's laughing so hard. And that's it's, when I know we're doing a good job. It's either that or hit is, has like the most disappointed face and, or he's literally just being like, stop, stop it. Stop, <laughs> stop. And then we just keep going because that means we're doing a good job. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's our sign that we, we're right. crossing the line. We Normally keep, you see cut it out and you stop, but we see cut it out. We're like, oh, we go more. That's yeah, roll it. Yeah. Let's, let's riff ahead. off each other here. Keep go. going. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, thank you for the comment, Tina. We try and we'll try again this week. If any of the feedback like these fine folks, you can either give us a call 773-527-2961 or email us at podcast at tool to play dot com. And in site-related news, I still have nothing, and Jay is still just getting settled in. You got anything there, buddy? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm hoping in the next like month or so, I'll actually be, I'll have enough time to do it. But new job, new responsibilities, can't really uh, donate any cycles to Tool to Play in terms of the development side of things. But I am here every Monday night to do the show. That's that is, that's quite the donation. <laughs> Thank you. That's well, that's how I write my stuff off for the most part. So, yes, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm always here, right? All right, well, then, then why don't we just slam on over to what we're playing, Jay? So, Joel, dude, I rock Albert. What have you been playing this week? And I know that you've been playing something because I was uh, chatting with you and I saw it in the background. This is true. Well, I've been, I just started playing uh, again, Destiny, obviously, because the patches came out. So, like two minutes before the show, I logged in to see what it's all about. 
Um, I've also been playing Warcraft again. I know a lot of people are sad. Mm-hmm. Everyone's sad about that. That's okay, though. I'm having a good time. That's all that matters. Um, but I actually am. I, I said last week that I was going to like slow down in the Destiny thing, and I really wasn't probably going to be into it until the expansion came back out. Um, but I love what they've done this update. This is everything that they that people were asking for. Yeah. Um, the idea of you no longer having to get all of the those uh, the shards in order to upgrade your gear, and you really just have to get the last new. Uh, what do they call it? Like a that, that's. that's- What's that's the last like, node shard now that's new to the game? Shard? Exotic shard? I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. It, hit is nodding yes, so that means it's right. Um, so, so I love what they're doing that. So all you have to do is really play the game uh, and then get you know seven shards a week to upgrade your, your final point. But everything else you just get oh, seven uh, like you normally would. Yeah, 70, seven strange, strange coins a week gets you one shard, which unlocks your final or, point in whatever exotic you have. Or you run some um, shit exotic bounty yeah. that you don't care about and then shard that for your Shard exotic it and shard. there you go. Yep. And I, I just like what they're doing. Uh, and I like they've buffed a lot of the crappy exotics that people had and, and were complaining about. And it really just shows that uh, not only will they listen to, to what people are, are asking for, but they're willing to change uh, the game's design really within a patch. I mean, the game didn't work this way before. It worked in a completely different way as of last, you know, last night. And not even a month or two in, they're willing to say, hey, I think we got it wrong with how you do your leveling up of this gear. We're willing to do it this way. We'll give it a shot. Here you go. That's a big deal. The bigger change was Matt's collection. It's just like, awesome. Oh, like, you know, you go, you go to Mars and there's everybody running from door to door to door to door, oh, checking so for the chest and everything. Now, you know, just run shit. You, you do the daily bounty that's like run six patrol missions on Mars. Well, boom, when you're done that, you automatically get 10 of whatever that thing is. And you're going to get some along the way without going out of your way for it. So, uh, and, and it becomes less important to have it in general. Yeah, right. So uh, I think that the, ch- the changes have been really good. And uh, I played a little bit earlier, tried some Crucible. Uh, so the, the weapon improvements are good. Some I'm not a fan of. What are you not a fan of in terms of weapon uh, improvements? One of the the exotics now has a knockback associated with it, not just in PVE but in PvP. I did not know that. I saw that. I saw the uh, the the little bubble about it, but I didn't think it was going to actually work in PvP. Yeah. So what happens is you're charging up your fusion rifle, and usually, as long as you have enough shield to. Uh, to hold off and take uh, soak up some bullets, but that's not the case. That first one knocks you out of your charge up, and then you got to start the ah, recharge. Yes, that's hardcore. So that that one seems a little OP at this point. That's my my early two games of Crucible right, opinion yeah. on that, but it does seem like a, a that's a huge change. I think that is a pretty good because there have been abilities like that in the past. In fact, a lot of the snipers have it, and a lot of the other regular uh, rares have it as well. Uh, but none have actually been able to be used in PvP, so it's weird to start to see some of these PVE things come in come into play. Like that's yep. I don't know, I don't know if that's good. Yeah, that's the only one I'm not a fan of. But everything else, huge fan. I can't wait to play more after the show tonight. Absolutely, nice. And uh, and there there was the the other downside was that you can no longer cheese the Templar. Downside, you say downside, I say overall needed, mm. had to be done. Even hits shaking his head. Look, you can't, I understand, like I always said, because you can't do hards and other people are doing it, it almost made it a commonplace thing. But this just sets the bar and says you can't cheat at all. And I understand that it sucks because you used to be able to get a bunch of shit without even trying. But the point is to try. That's why you play video games is to hopefully win. So yep. even though I understand the cheese, I get it. I'm fully, and in fact, I support the cheese uh, as well. Oh, I don't doubt that we can do it. it That's, it's we, a good we know we can do it. It's yeah. just sometimes it's just easier to cheese and relax mm-hmm. and talk to your friends. Like there's a lot more socialization during the uh, uh, you can just socialize, have a good time versus when you're actually playing for real. There's a lot more call outs and a lot more attention paying. Well, you're, you're, you're playing a real video game at that point. Yes, yes. Instead, <laughs> of, <laughs> and, instead of hanging out in a lobby where you have to just run out and throw grenades every once in a while. Right. Life. Yes. Exactly. I do like the lobby break, though. Yeah, so I, understand. I understand. Six and one, half dozen the other. Uh, well, I too, I've only played Destiny, and that's all I play now, all the time, exclusively. That's although, all. I, although I, I, I have to admit, I, I did play something I didn't put on the outline here, which was uh, the the guys that made You Don't Know Jack put out this Jack oh, pack right. now that has You Don't Know Jack 2015, 2014. Uh, it has an updated version of Fibbage, which was their last game where everybody used a phone and did like a Balderdash kind of game. 
Uh, that's been updated with 50% more questions. Also comes with a drawing game, kind of like a Pictionary meets draw something. It's called Drawful. Uh, and another word game. And uh, we had some friends over, my good buddy Mike Scott, Mr. GBMS, was in with his wife for the Thanksgiving. We had him over for dinner and sat around. She is not a gamer, yet we all sat around, had a blast. Everybody's laughing their ass off. So I can't recommend this enough for if you're somebody that has people over, you have to play party games, you, you can have up to 100 people on some of these games because everybody's just playing on their smartphone. Doesn't matter. Uh, whether you have enough controllers or they have any skill or whatever, everybody does not know how to use their smartphone. So it's uh, definitely a recommended thing. I can't recommend it enough. Interesting. Yeah. All right, Jay. Well, on that, why don't we move on over to the new releases? And it's a short list this week, only two new releases. First new release out this week is a multi-platform release, and it's The Crew. And this is out for the Xbox One, the PS3, the 360, and the PC. This is Ubisoft's new persistent... Well, that should be the PS4, right? Yeah, it's def- I would assume yeah. it's not the PS3. The PS3. Yeah, the Xbox One, the PS4, the 360, and the PC. This is Ubisoft's new open, ugh, new persistent open-world racing game. Uh, it features a huge single-player campaign that'll take you over 20 hours to play through. Uh, but it does still require internet, con- internet connectivity because it is a persistent world game. So you're playing on a world on some server somewhere, not in your local world, even though it's single player. Uh, in addition to the races, there's a ton of mini games in the game. So as you're traveling across country, you, you drive through an area. It's like, oh, if you cross this little start line here, you can be involved in this mini game to you know, make X number of spin outs or this or that or whatever. Uh, driving coast to coast in the game, which is fully rendered from California through the northeast That'll take you about 90 minutes in the game. Obviously, Jesus. obviously, you don't want it to take uh, the it shouldn't be a one for one ratio. So they skip some of the the dumb shit in the middle of big cities and you have it's a little gap and then you're in the next big city and the next big city. So the way they've done this is actually pretty nice. Uh, in addition to the open world stuff, it also supports a more traditional eight player multiplayer racing type thing. So You pick a race and you play with seven other buddies or you go online and match make to it. Uh, the game looks great, and it seems to be a uh, a fun racing game for less serious racing people. Well, this is know. a game that, like, uh, this is a, a game that actually, no, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was interested in it because I'd be going too far, especially a racing game. But um, I like what they're actually trying to do here, and I believe that this game was like, wasn't it pushed back like eight hundred and fifty five thousand times? Yeah, it was supposed to come out last year. I think. Last year, yeah. And I, what I liked about that too, from what I was reading, is during the beta and like during when they were doing all the testing, uh, people just basically said that it wasn't good, and it, I knew it had like a ton of problems and and all that mess. And given some of the stories we're going to be that are going to be coming up in the show uh, a little bit later, um, it's nice to see someone say, "Hey, maybe we haven't gotten it right, and we need to keep going and try to fix things before we release this game." Now, that's I don't know whether the game is released bug free now. It's very well possible that they did an, another year of testing and and building on the game, and it still is fucked up. I don't know, uh, but it's one of the things about the crew that I thought was an interesting thing is when you know a company kind of gets feedback and says. Maybe we haven't gotten everything right. Let's um, listen to that feedback. And and yeah, and build on it. So it's definitely a cool idea, uh, something that really hasn't been done before. I think we're kind of seeing this this melding of RPG elements in pretty much every game that we get nowadays. So not too surprised there, but it's really cool to finally see it, um, you know, coming into the into the, the racing world a, yep. a little bit more. So yeah, cool, cool stuff. All right, well, the only other new release out this week is a also a multi-platform release. It's Game of Thrones Episode 1, and this is out for the Xbox One, the PS4, the 360, the PS3, PC, Mac, iOS, and Shit Droid. Telltale's wildly popular episodic games are back, uh, this time giving Game of Thrones the full treatment. Uh, the game will feature six episodes and takes place concurrently with the TV series, starting at the end of Season 3, and it will carry all the way through Season 5. Uh, You play in the game as members of the House Forrester, which is a house that we have not seen in the TV show, but it is a house from the books, and it does interact with locations and characters that you know from the series. Uh, Hype for the game's pretty fucking high. Telltale has been basically on fire with these games, whether it was The Walking Dead, whether it was The Wolf Among Us, they just had that new Borderlands one, uh, Tales from the Borderlands out. So these guys, this is a format of storytelling that they seem to have nailed down and nailed down well they they know how to break things into these episodes that you know when you reach the end of one you can't wait to play the next one so i i'm actually pretty excited for this i love game of thrones and 
Whereas I played the, some of the Walking Dead one, but it wasn't really tied to the TV show. It was just like another story yeah, in that right. universe. But where this is directly tied to the TV series, I'm actually pretty excited about this one. Maybe this will be something I, I wouldn't play on the console, but maybe it's something I play uh, on my phone. or yeah, like the tablet style. Yeah. yeah, just when I'm not by a real console, basically. Well, I know that the a hit loves hit loves Telltale. I think if Hit could like live with Telltale, he probably would. Uh, if he could find a job with Telltale, I don't know what he would do over there, but it'd be be something amazing. Maybe stream for Telltale. I don't know. But uh, yeah, he's super into this. I never, I never myself have found any desire to do that type of storytelling game. I've always been so active with my gaming where. Even in like large MMOs like World of Warcraft or like, you know, stuff like that. I don't even pay attention to the story. I couldn't tell you any main characters. I literally play the game to fuck shit up um, and shoot things. And it's like I've always been that way. So I've never like had that desire. But from looking at a game like that, the amount of work that they've done into bringing storytelling as the forefront of playing the game, as it, you know, that's like the main character is the story. Um, they've obviously done a phenomenal job. And I think they're probably the company right now in terms of bringing story into video games. So um, I, I, I can't see why this wouldn't be, you know, you look at the pedigree, you look at what they've done, and everyone seems to love what they yeah. put out. So This is going to be wildly successful. Guaranteed. Yeah. Got my two thumbs up. All right, Jay, well, on that, why don't we uh, meander on over into gaming news for story? For story, if you remember, last week we talked about this. Uh, Kickstarter has suspended the funding of the blood collecting game device. And this was our what the fuck story last week. So um, what the fuck is now in, in the regular news? And I guess Kickstarter felt it was what the fuck as well, because uh, a modified blood collection unit that draws blood from game players whenever their controller rumbles launched on Kickstarter early this month. But unfortunately, the Canadian duo behind the project's uh, Kickstarter has suspended the project's funding drive and it's ironic because it was obviously set up to help people uh, but according to cnet kickstarter itself has stated that its policy on project suspend suspensions is to offer no comment so they're not telling uh, anyone why this is happening currently the project's creators told joystick in an email that they don't have any answers yet uh, as well as to why they were suspended quote our guesses are that perhaps it has to do with our tie-in to medical equipment or charity, or safety concerns, since we're not officially partnered with a blood clinic yet, but we're working on that. The project creators claim on their page that, quote, by running carefully monitored tests with medical professionals, we've created a unit that makes blood donation easy, fun, and nearly painless. However, none of the team involved are credited as said mes uh, medical professionals, which I kind of think might be part of the problem. Uh, instead, they are identified as, quote, two dudes who normally work as digital creative experts at advertising agencies who took some time off, end quote. I don't know if that's the right pedigree you want for that. The project suspension occurred with $246,000. Well, $610,000 added onto that. Left to go of its original $250,000 goal. Now, mind you, they were like, they were right there. They were right there. Yeah, they, were, uh, they, were, they had earned they were, like $3,390. They were just like about to be funded uh, with both figures, of course, in Canadian dollars, which we call Monopoly money. Yep. So Fake. what are your thoughts on that, Derek? All right. So first, I, I know that when you get to that last line and it's like, you know, they only pulled in $3,300 out right. of their $250,000. you are like, well, this thing was going to fail anyway or it sucked. But – this thing got so much press as soon as it launched that I guarantee, like we just talked about this last week, the day that it launched. It was now, fresh, yeah. And it's a week right. later and it's already been closed out during that week. So right. it didn't have a whole lot of time to to bring in money. I, You know, I, I guess it seems to have been done the wrong way. I, a lot of these things where someone's trying to pitch something to a certain audience, like in this case, a medical audience. Yeah. Even if you're a company of two dude bros and you're just like yeah dude fucking bruising chicks bro but at <laughs> least when you start your company to do your kickstarter you're like hey maybe we should bring in a uh so someone will find a, a doctor friend of ours sure yeah, yeah. So just so we have some buy-in from the medical community be like yeah this is totally safe but otherwise it's two guys telling you 
hey, when this rumbles, it's going to take your blood, but it's not going to kill you. Like, it's cool. Like, we, we advertise for a living. Like, we're two bros. You got to trust us. I mean, we're two bros. We, we've cool. been bros since college. Frat time, bro. Yeah. Brewskis. I, I mean, I can only imagine that's the re- like to me. That's the main reason. There's there's no medical professional behind it. The, there's no, and I'm not saying there's no science behind it, but you know, there's no like, there's no research behind it. There's no one there to like to give credit to what they're doing. And you're doing it on Kickstarter, which is also odd. I don't know if like the medical industry is really out there, you know, trolling Kickstarter for new things that are going to save people. I just don't think that's you know something that happens on a daily basis. So I think it was so far out of what Kickstarter is about. Once it reached into that, you know, like taking blood uh, level, that Kickstarter just had to shut it down. So, I mean, we thought it was what the fuck for a reason. I think we've almost proven. Yeah, yeah now uh, Joystick has, has yeah. reified our opinion and, exactly. as well as Kickstarter by shutting it down. Yes. Right. Right. So, nice. Yeah. All right. Next story. All right. Next story. Ubisoft yanks Assassin's Creed Unity season pass, placates buyers with free games. This is via Gama Sutra. Amidst the long-running technical issues with Assassin's Creed Unity, Ubisoft has abruptly curtailed its DLC plans and made some significant business concessions to appease those who purchased the game. This is notable because it continues an ongoing trend of developers at AAA companies like Ubisoft, Microsoft, and Sony, scrambling to make good after releasing high-profile titles like Halo, we talk about all the time, uh, Drive Club, and really the list does go on, with significant post-launch problems. This has kind of become the state of gaming. Yeah, it's commonplace now. Yeah, which is... It's disgusting. So uh, Ubisoft Montreal and Toronto CEO Yanis Mollat uh, uh, published an update to Assassin's Creed Unity's live blog today with a promise that the company is continuing to patch the game and an assurance that the upcoming Unity DLC pack, Dead Kings, which was originally intended to be paid DLC included with the game season pass, will be free for download. So that's decent. Yep. Um, quote, at launch, the overall quality of the game was diminished by bugs and unexpected technical issues, end quote, wrote Mallet. Quote, I want to sincerely apologize on behalf of Ubisoft and the entire Assassin's Creed team. End quote. <laughs> Ubisoft still seems intent on releasing further content for season pass holders, and it's yet unclear whether it will be made free for everyone. I will say I doubt that. Uh, the, co- the company is also discontinuing both digital and retail sales of Unity se- uh, season pass and offering a free game to those who have already purchased it. You can find a full list of games available as well as the terms and conditions for claiming one on Ubisoft's website. So, ugh, like, yeah. you know, Sarcasmo says it best in chat. It's a $60 fucking beta. And this is what we do now. We, we spend money before the game's even released. And that's the other thing. It's normally a pre-release. They're getting money before the product even reaches our hands, which is a very strange thing when you think that there's very little products out there. In fact, I would say gaming is almost the only product out there where you pay ahead of time all the time. It's commonplace to give them money before you've ever seen the product outside of what you've seen on your TV. Uh, You know, it'd be akin to paying for a movie a month. You see the trailer for Star Wars, you put down your money and then you go see it and it's a shitty movie. Mm -hmm. Um, It's strange. It's really a strange way we've sort of moved in this industry. And, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing in terms of. Well, what this is so, this what do is think? double. This is be, not only did yeah. these people buy the game, but they bought in early on the season pass, assuming that I assume the game will work. So I assume I will want the DLC for it at a discounted price. And I, I don't know. It, this is that's fucked. And part of what you said there was um, you were speculating that maybe the other DLC that's coming out would not be free or whatever. But if they're canceling the season pass. They're no longer going to be offering that digital or retail sales of that. And they're giving a free game to people that already purchased it. Maybe that's just going away and either the DLC will all be, excuse me, all be free because you know, it's like the apology method or maybe you just sell it onesie twosie piecemeal, but nothing is going free to anyone at this point. I think, I think as soon as they give the season pass people a game, I feel like they think they've got their way out of that. Yeah. they're They're done. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. It's, it's sad. And it, it really does go to show the state of this industry. No, no console, no uh, developer. Nobody is immune to this. 
whether no, it's that's yeah no. it's PlayStation with the uh, Drive Club, whether it's uh, you know Master Chief on on the Xbox, Unity on everything. It's just it's sad, and I think part of it goes to the fact that back in, and people always say, well, why, why did your developers just lazy now? They just patch after it comes out. But I don't think that's it. I think that I don't either. When yeah. we were kids, and you would look in a video game magazine, and it would say Game X coming this fall, coming this winter, coming. Fall slash winter slash spring. Like they, they didn't put these fucking pointed release dates on things. There was no l- like line in the sand that they had to hit. And nowadays these lines in the sand are so drawn out in advance that one, if you draw the line and then change it, people are like, some's fucked with the game. Nobody should get this. So you're almost better off just releasing the game on that date and then patching it afterwards and dealing with the repercussions then. But if nobody set release dates, like, like, uh, our, our friends with the, do the Witcher, like that thing has been in development for years and years and years. The game is going to come out. It's going to be the fucking absolute tits. They got like 37 pieces of free DLC that are coming for it. And they only now recently gave out the release date, like three months before it was coming out. Otherwise it was like, yeah, we'll we'll release it when it's ready or whatever their crazy cool accent was their Polish accent. But, right. uh, I don't know. I just think that release dates are part of the problem. Don't give a release date. I know it fucks people that you want to pre-order it at GameStop or whatever, but you know, put out the game when it's ready. Not when, when you think it should be out. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it is, it's, it's really just, the, it's there. I, I, we have to say that up front that there are companies that don't do this, but, uh, and that's, I think it's almost rare that that happens nowadays. Um, but I will say even when companies don't put release dates on things like Blizzard is even falling, uh, into this category when they released Diablo three, you know, they were always known as the, we do not ship until it's ready. Uh, and it was, it's a, it's a trademark of theirs. Now when people ask for when features are going to come out, everyone, they always respond with soon, you know, TM, uh, and they don't give dates on anything. And even they are not immune to this, even, even with the release of Diablo three, which, you know, arguably took years, decade, right? Didn't, you know, in development, uh, still was not released in good working order. It's the the games have become so massive and so much money has been put into them. Eventually they need to get out there. And it's sad to say, but internal testing is, can only really go so far when you're testing against millions of concurrent users of a video game at one time. Um, and that's not always the case. No, no, there's things like, like hit hit, my background image over here. This is an actual thing that happens in Assassin's Creed Unity. I don't know if you guys can see this back here. Am I leaning the right way? That is something that happens with facial geometry where the inside organs of the face are now on the outside of the skin and there's no skin wrapped over it. Imagine if you were playing that game and that's what you saw. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. (laughs) Like that has nothing to do with server load. Agreed. That, yes. That has nothing yeah. to do with like, Agreed. like that is like the thing that nightmares are made of right <laughs> now. <laughs> that's, that's some fucked up shit. And that's not the only example. Like there's, there's shots of that online where like there's a girl that has no face like that and she's making out with a guy like that guy. Eh, like it's fucked up. I don't know that that's inexcusable. And hopefully Uh, you know, at least get those things out of the way. And then if you launch and there's problems with your multiplayer that people understand more, it's when there's problems with your menus, there's problems with your lobby system. Lobby system is not multiplayer that, that transcends multiplayer, but you know, the multiplayer stuff, people at least will give you a little bit of leeway on if your single player shit is broken. If it doesn't look right, if it doesn't play right, then you did something wrong and you didn't put in the work and the effort that's required. Agreed. All right. Next story. All right. Next story. (laughs) That's a trend, people. (laughs) Latest Master Chief Collection update addresses matchmaking, stability, and more. This is via joystick. Uh, Halo, the Master Chief Collection, has been plagued, and I want to, I wish that was bolded, plagued, with matchmaking problems since its initial launch. But a fresh update from developer 343 Industries should be available the next time you boot up the game. Uh, As detailed on Halo Waypoint, the 523 megabyte patch focuses on, quote, a number of matchmaking issues, (sighs) fixes various bug related bug bugs related to UI and the party system and also improves overall stability. So it's basically 
a new game. Uh, highlights include tweaks to how the matchmaking system handles pairing, a change to custom game settings remain applied to follow-up matches, and efforts to improve stability both for the user interface and for parties trying to find a match. Previous updates have also addressed matchmaking issues as well, but the Master Chief Collection has yet to reach a stable state for pretty much anyone in the existence of this planet. 343 Industries head Bonnie Ross has vowed to, quote, make this right with our fans, unquote, once the Master Chief Collection's persisting issues have been resolved. Um, so I saw this blog post, and what really yeah, we, you, we yeah. read this live last Monday night. That's right, yeah. We, that's right. And if you guys were listening last week, the thing that really struck us was that they're not even saying it's, it's they're done. Uh, if you read the blog post, a lot of it's like, we're not even close, even with this patch, to being stable. And we don't know when we're going to be stable. We have no idea when that's going to happen. That it will maybe happen at some point, and then once it does happen, then we're going to figure out what the hell free shit we're going to even give you. Mm -hmm. um, because like me and Derek were saying last week, it's not like there's any more DLC left to give. I mean, mm -hmm. everything in the world is on the game. And, and I guess to their credit, at least everything in the world is already on the game. I mean, at least there is no more DLC to buy. But I wonder what they can even give at this point. So yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you What do you think? I mean, like, what, I, what do you What are your thoughts? I, I, I know we we've hashed this over and over and over here, but yeah, I I agree. There's it's it's horrible, and I have really what it boils down to is what are they going to do to make it right when this is finally all said and done? Because I have a copy sitting here. I know you have a copy there. Hit pretends to play his copy every day. He's like, <laughs> he doesn't mind like four hour fucking matchmaking or whatever. Hit is typing in chat DLC like there's going to be more <laughs> DLC. He thinks that they're going to give the Reach DLC. Reach DLC is not part of this. It can never be part of this because it's a different fucking game. It doesn't, it doesn't operate under the same rules as this. You can't just take the Reach maps and pump them into this ecosystem because it's not a Reach game. It's a Master Chief game that has Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's not a Halo Reach. It's, it's, completely outside of that. So really the only thing they can do to make this right. And I said it last week or speculating on is, you know what? Hey, anybody that bought the master chief collection will now directly from, uh, from three, four, three, you can order a digital copy of halo five for right. $20 off, $30 off, whatever. But yeah, there's no more DLC hit. You can type it all you want in the chat 20 times. There, but there, <laughs> there's no DLC for it. They've given us all of it. Like it is, it is the DLC. It is it like is the DLC. This is not like somebody's milk and cum shots over the night. They fucking dropped their entire load and blew fucking that chick off the couch by 20 feet. Just boom. Wow. Yeah, that is quite the, the analogy, but it is. Yeah. I'm hoping that somebody out there was like, wow, that is a huge load. And that is the amount of DLC there is. If, <laughs> if one person got the reference, yeah. then, then yeah, that's all that matters. Right. This isn't like uh, the dribble dribble. So, you know, dribble on the chest and I got more coming later. No, this is boom. Like <laughs> launch her out the door on the next one. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I, I don't even want to argue with you at this point because, uh, yeah, I'm that's, afraid. I'm yeah, afraid. that's fucked up. Next story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Great segue, too. All Wait. right. Next story. Activision is using DMCA takedowns. And we've heard this a million times before on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare cheat and glitch videos. This is uh, a game, game politics. Uh, according to this Ars Technica report, Activision is using DMC takedowns on YouTube videos that tell players how to use glitches and exploits in the latest Call of Duty title, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Over the weekend, video network Machinima sent out a tweet warning other YouTube makers uh, that Activision was cracking down on videos that highlighted the possible ways to cheat in Advanced Warfare. According to the subsequent and expanded statement from uh, Machinima, the video network has warned partners about the perils of posting Call of Duty videos. Quote, recently Machinima notified its network partners that posting content about Call of Duty videos may receive a strike if flagged against Activision. If flagged by Activision. Unquote. The statement obtained by Ars Technica reads, quote, Machinima was prompted to take this action in order to inform its network partners so that they would remain in good standing on YouTube. When a channel receives a certain number of strikes, it is possible that they may be blocked as a YouTube partner. Machinima's action are to protect not only its network partners, but its publisher 
publisher partners as well, end quote. The R's uh, report goes on to note that Activision seems to be selective in which videos uh, it puts content ID strikes against videos. It This is a weirdly worded sentence. Uh, the R's report goes on to note that Activision seems to be selective in which videos it's it's put content ID strikes against videos, glitches, and that are neutral. God, it's the worst. Type that is the worst sense ever. sentence ever. That's directly from game politics. That is from game politics. Basically, and I'm going to sum this up because game politics is not a fucking ready sentence. But basically, um, they're putting they're putting out the the strikes against these videos. Um, I think, and, and the way I'm reading it, I believe is just if you're doing the cheating stuff. So I, I actually think that's okay. I mean. We've wow. seen this in, in the past, but normally it's just for no fucking reason. I mean, it's, it's happened to Tool oh. to Play. Yeah, it's we happened get, to hit. We get DMC takedown, uh, DMCA takedowns for using content. What The worst is for using the trailer they send us. They're like, yeah. hey, here's a video <laughs> that you can encode and post for all of your viewers or listeners or readers. And you do that, and it's like, DMC takedown, bitch. This matches Activision's content. And we're like, but Activision gave us this content and told us to post it. <laughs> like, uh, so that, that part's fucked up. But I, I, think, I think this is fucked up. I, I know you're you disagreeing. Do. I don't care what a video shows. I don't think that DMCA takedowns are what, what this is. That's not the nature of the law. That's not what you're supposed to use True. DMCA takedowns for. It's either all of the Call of Duty content out there is conflicting or none of it is. It's not just the content you don't want people to see. Like that's, it's like if you were on, it's a very good point. It's like if you were on like real world or survivor or one of these things, you know, they film tons of content of you and they put a small chunk on TV, but they could put the chunk of you taking a shit or, or fucking some chick in the dirt back by the camp or whatever. I'm sure that happens. Wow. Boston Rob, like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. He's, yeah, he's Mac Daddy, right? Yeah, of course. Boom, yeah. boom, Boston Rob, that's right, yeah, yeah. Um, so that shit happens, but they don't put that con, like, they don't show that. But just because someone shows it doesn't mean the right way to take it down is with the the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That is not the way to do this. Um, maybe you know, maybe Activision reaches out to people individually, says, hey, you know what, this is, you know, we don't like this. Maybe that doesn't scale, but you know what? But by the time your game's out there, if there's glitches, the better way to have people not do them is to patch them. I, I was going to say, it does seem like a very lazy and machine gun approach, uh, you know, spray and pray by, by their method. But I, I even think the solution is probably easier. Whoever's playing and they see these glitches, just ban that user. I mean, ban the user of your game. That's yeah, what you'll, that's you'll the see their username. You take. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the way it should work. Uh, if, if, the, if the issue is with how they're playing your game, that really, I agree with you, doesn't relate to how people are viewing the video. The video is separate at that point than the game itself. They're really two, two different forms of entertainment. One is just watching someone play video games and the other is actually physically playing the game. And really, the person punished shouldn't be the viewer at that level. It should be the person that did the action. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I really do kind of see where you're coming from. It feels like, they're abusing what the DMCA was originally written for, and therefore it's not valid uh, to do so. Yeah. I mean, I guess they could, if they wanted to, um, start taking down anyone that did any videos on Activision Blizzard stuff. Uh, that would be the only but, way for it to be okay. I but suppose. that's a slippery slope. Then but all of a sudden, it's, it's everything. So yeah. I, I, you know, I, you, none of us like the DMCA to begin with. It's We already feel like it's overused. Yeah. And, and the only way we're ever going to get that change is by saying, okay, here's the right uses, here's the wrong uses. When you have someone come and do the most egregiously wrong use of it possible, then it cheapens the whole thing. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe it ends up being better for us. Maybe we're like, look, this thing's a piece of shit. These guys just don't want people to find their hacks in their game and they're using it. And maybe it's, maybe it's better for us to get rid of the whole thing altogether. I, I don't know, but it's definitely not in the spirit of the DMCA. It is, it is worse than, you know, when little record companies sued, like, 90 year old grandmas for downloading music that they didn't download or whatever. It's, it's fucked up. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, you, you I gotta say you swayed me. You swayed me at the end. Nice. You so, started on the other side and it brought you right back. Right, right, right. So, you know, I mean, basically what do you think about the story? Jay, this story has me saying, what the fuck? And on that, we'll hop on over to the mailbag and voicemails. Altius asks, Sorry, I'm traveling for the holiday, so just a quick one today. D 
Did you two make any video game purchases on Black Friday? If so, what vibe did you get regarding Microsoft versus Sony? Hmm, that's interesting. I, I did not purchase any games. Mm. I did. Um, this is no, the did you? This is the oh, wait. First. Yes, I did. What am I talking about? Yeah. Jesus Christ! I got uh, Super Smash Brothers, <laughs> and uh, I also got um, Call of Duty as well. I won't wow. actually play it, um, but the reason I got it was because I bought another Xbox for my living room. So I got it with the, the Xbox. So that's the reason. So no, I wasn't really actively buying it. But, um, but I guess that to your question, to your point, when you talk about Sony versus uh, PS4, I now have two Xbox Ones mm. and one PS4. So in my household, Xbox is winning. Yeah. Well, I, I too went out. Like I literally have never shopped on Black Friday, ever. And this year I went out with my brother only to uh, to acquire, and uh, the kids are all asleep, but whatever, uh, to acquire another Xbox for our house for Christmas at yeah three twenty nine plus a thirty dollar gift card. How can you go wrong? That's three hundred bucks for an Xbox. End of story. And they don't need the connect in their room. It's a like, yeah. But what are you going to do in your bedroom with that? Now, granted, when we started talking, then they might be interested in the Xbox for the for their room. You know, they were like, oh, yeah, we can't wait to tell the TV to do that. No, no, we're not going to pay 100 bucks so you can be like Xbox turn on. <laughs> like, the, the, you're, you're fucking 10 years old. You know, whatever. Fuck off. Get up so, and click the button yourself, yes. you lazy motherfucker. Yeah, I know. But I did, uh, I did head out. And the store that I went to, which mm -hmm. is a store I do not frequent often, so there was a lot of culture shock for me, was a Walmart. Now, I will tell you that the way that Walmart works during the Black Friday sale stuff is that – well, the whole first off, they have a bunch of like police tape in the store to like feed people through the store in a certain, certain direction they want you to go. But within the store, they have the major deals, and that is like the Xbox deal. They had a PlayStation deal. Uh, they had a couple other things, TV deal, something else. And what they do is those are separate lines within the store, and they have different checkouts. Like one of them might be back by like the restrooms at the customer service counter. One might be over by the popcorn counter. Now that is an actual register. So they segregate people within the store. The PlayStation line there was super short. I would say it was 10 people tops. Uh, the, the deal for the Xbox One there, I dropped my brother off while I parked the car. He went waiting in line for me. He didn't even need this. He just, he was excited to see me have to get out and go deal with this shit on fucking, <laughs> uh, on the holiday weekend. Uh, so he waited in line for me. When I got there, after parking the car for 30 minutes, I finally got the car parked, went inside, and I was probably 40 people back in line. Really? And so I would say, and take into account, that other line was always at 10. This one was at 40. There was people behind him. It was probably 60 people deep. So that's a, a 6 to 1 ratio of interest over the Xbox over the, the PlayStation, at least from what I saw in that one particular Walmart on that one particular night. Right. But um, I don't know. I, you know, and like you said, we are now a, well, come Christmas day, we are going to be a three Xbox one, one PS4 household. So take that way as you will. And Bungie, you know, I'm sad that all your exclusive shit's coming for the, the shit station. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, look, I, again, I don't, I, I don't even call it the shit station cause I actually, I, I like it. I think the PS4 is a fine Oh, I do too. But the, I, the reason, and, and this, this is the only reason I think you'll, you'll ever need to have like the dual uh, consoles in one place is really that beyond a gaming system, um, the Xbox One does so much more. So if I'm going to buy two, and in my case, the whole reason is I now have this nice office with a gaming room and I've got the you know 36-inch TV behind me where I can turn around and play my games. But I, what I lack now in the living room is a lot of the TV oriented stuff that I need from my Xbox one. That's the reason I'm making that purchase. That does not come with my PS4. If it did, it might be a different story, but it doesn't. So a lot of like, I stream a lot of my movies directly from it. Uh, my, t like I said, my TV, there's the party games and all those other things. And of course, then the friends list itself of all my friends, it just makes more sense. And now that it's like what, 320 or 340 with yeah. a game, it's makes it's fucking a no brainer. Yeah. Why a game or two? You can get Assassin's Creed, right. Assassin's Creed Unity, <clears throat> take it with a grain of salt, and the last Assassin's Creed with yeah. it. Or you can I mean, get it's, the, it's the Master Chief Collection one, which ironically is <laughs> equally as fucked. 
But, but yeah, yeah it, it makes it a, a purchase that, you know, if you're making that decision, the, the decision is almost made for you. Um, so in that respect, you know, again, both of what me and Derek are saying are, are very uh, in our little microcosm of what we have seen. Um, the Xbox is doing very well. Certainly in the Albert household is doing very well. And then the Nolan household is doing very well as well. Um, but I guess we won't really know the numbers until after the holiday season. But no, I there, suspect there were, there they some, did good. There were some some speculative numbers today that I refused to put in the show tonight because they're really based on like a small sample size of people that were like exit interviews at stores. But I'm sure by the next episode we'll have some actual uh, Black Friday numbers that we can talk yeah. to as as well as Cyber Monday numbers. Oh, and yeah. That should be the, the uh, I think, a good signal for what's going into Christmas. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, great question, Altheus. Despite your rushed, shitty, quick question, we still rode that like a Christmas pony. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if any of you feedback, give us a call, 773-527-2961. Email us at podcast at toolplay.com. You can also comment in this episode's thread on the Tool to Play homepage. And sponsors! Remember, by sponsoring us, you help support our show. And we have no sponsors right now, so if you have something you want to sell, just something you want to say, just you know a statement, like you're, you want to break up with your boyfriend, boom, here's the show for it. Just toss out a number, we'll do it. Uh, you want to sell something, toss out a number, we'll do it. Right now, we have no sponsors, so we're kind of like the bitch on fucking, oh, you know, I don't know, we, I'll do whatever, okay? Like, eh. So, yeah, we're, we're basing on the rebound, and we'll take whatever. So make us an offer. We'll probably take it at this point. So 773-527-2961, podcast at toolplay.com. Tell us what you're selling or what you want to pimp or whatever. Uh, we'll sell it, pimp it, whatever. You pay us. Boom. Done. Twitter us up. You can find everything tool player related at twitter.com slash tool to play. Everything podcast released at twitter.com slash still underscore got underscore game. I, king of the motherfucking internet, god of everything that's motherfucking holy, I'm at twitter.com slash Derek Nolan. I, the very humble Joel Dude I Rock Albert, I'm at twitter.com slash Dude I Rock. He says humble, but his name is Dude I Rock. Like, it is the ultimate juxtaposition of humbleness and just saying. ego. Yes, you see, you see. I'm humble in the fact that I know I'm amazing. That's all I'm just, I'm just trying to put that out there. <laughs> so we're, we're all assholes here is what we're saying. Yes. All right. Facebook the fuck out of us. Facebook.com slash tool to play. Facebook.com slash Derek Nolan. Facebook.com slash dude I rock. We have this little thing called a YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash tool to play. If you go there, you subscribe. You get all of whoa, somebody is smashing shit on the show. And that, is, <laughs> that person is Joel, dude. I rock Albert. <laughs> I just, I just let the gavel down right there. Yeah, it was like, wow. Judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop uh, your phones on desks. People don't do it. It was like playing a Phoenix Wright game. <laughs> I object. <laughs> um, that's obscure reference. All right. Uh, so on our, yeah, now you really fucked I killed you. Up. I, I, I killed you. Sorry. Um, so subscribe to us there and you will get each and every bit of tool to play's video content, whether it's awesome weekly shows like this that you can count on, uh, like still got game. It will be there. Whether it's one-off shows, like whenever Tiff decides she's ever going to do a show and interview people, or if hit ever brings back hits, motherfucking <laughs> And uh, I will say that we got a lot of comments on that that uh, I kept offline that people do want that show back. But you know what? There's only so much shrink wrap eating that Hit can do at midnight. <laughs> it's when he's super baked. But, it's, a um, it's a tough yeah. job. Yeah. It's really hard to open shrink wrap when you're baked too. I think that's really – maybe maybe it wasn't like a thing where he, he was trying to slow play it. Like he wasn't like – Oh, look at this. Like, maybe he was just like, I'm so fucking baked. I can't even open this thing. What's going on? A, I can't open it. A, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, all those shows, and it, it, they're all available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tool to play. And, uh, you know, you go there, it is your one stop shop for all of Tool to Play's video content. We also have an app in the iTunes App Store and in the shitty Android App Store. And it's the Tool to Play app. Go there, search for Tool to Play. Right now, it is our Gen 1 portal to all Tool to Play's content. Whether it's our homepage news content, whether it's our video content, it is all pushed to that app. But we are looking for suggestions and, and improvements to the app. And the only way that you're going to be able to provide them to us is if you try it. Because if you don't try it, we're not going to know what you want. 
So please go download it for free. It, it, there's no excuse not to. I guess maybe if you're a Windows Phone person, like if those still exist, you know, hey, you, you're out of luck. But if you are an, an <laughs> iPhone person, which is the majority of society, or if it's the Android derelicts who are like, yeah, rebel against the man, bro. Fuck Apple. That's right. Let's go fucking have unprotected sex with dirty hookers. Like whatever the Android people are saying these days, which that's pretty much what they're saying. I see them at work all the time. <laughs> that's oh my what, God. They're in the break room saying that. I'm just like, Jesus. oh my God, you guys are out of control. But, uh, go there, get it for free. Check it out. And, uh, and let us know what we can do to make it better. Also, speaking of iTunes, please rate and review this podcast on iTunes. We need five-star reviews. Go there, give us a five-star review. Write a little some nice little blurb. Love the show. Great show. Gods, super gods, mega gods, uber mega gods. Like, you throw as many things in front of gods as you want as long as they're positive. They don't negate the god concept. You can't be like, not gods, because that would be incorrect. But as long as it... it is additive to the, the plusness of godness, then uh, enter that. <laughs> I see Jay like he doesn't think plusness of godness is an actual. God. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that doesn't, uh, <laughs> it doesn't compute on anyone's level. Okay. Well, for the plusness of godness, go there and just crank it up. Give us a nice comment and five stars. Uh, last but not least, we have a Twitch TV channel. That's twitch.tv slash tool to play. You can go there. You can follow us absolutely free. You'll be notified when we go live with shows like this, um, shows like when, when Hit is streaming games, they will all be there. But there's something special on our Twitch TV channel, and this is when we really reach out to you with a, an open heart and, and pure love for you guys. Because down at the bottom there, I'm going to point back and forth because I have no idea where it is, but there, and Jay is doing the same, there is a button that says subscribe, and that allows you to give a little bit back out of your hard-earned money each month to us because we give you our hard-earned time each month. And some months it's been worse than others, but for the most part, we crank out at least three or four or five shows a month. And uh, come E3 time, we make up for it all. That's like really the, the, the steel wheels of the year. You know, a three and a half hour show after putting in multiple days of painful three hours sleep all day working just to get you guys the information you need. So if you feel like kicking something back, it's down there at the bottom, just click the subscribe button and throw a little something our way. You, you know, if you don't like after a month, you feel dirty. You feel like oh, I gave my money to them. Well, you can cancel it, but you know, really that's the way if, if you want to support us, that is the best way better than even supporting our sponsors when we have them, but unless we have them and then that's the best way right. Spons- yeah, cause we want to sell sponsors, but uh, <laughs> either way, that is the best way to give something back to the show. Um, and I guess finally, I just want to remind you all join us live each and every Monday night, 9 PM Eastern, 6 PM Pacific, twitch.tv slash tool to play. And on that Jay, why don't we wrap this episode up? I am Derek D smooth Nolan. And I am Joel dude. I rock Albert. Let's ship it now and patch it later. Patch it later. Oh my God. <laughs>